how this company used their outspoken voice and no fucks given marketing tactics to build up a cult brand that is now valued at $1.7 billion. Taking coffee to another level. This is Black Rifle, Rifle Coffee, coffee company. company. Let's go. What's up, guys? This is Sean Azari. I'm with Matt Skopak. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to Deep Dive, episode 57, where we dive into businesses like Black Rifle Coffee and dive into their marketing and business strategies such that you can take these tactics and start implementing into your business. Another company I love, Matt, uh, they started in 2014, late 2014. Late 2014, yeah. By vets. Um, yep. Mainly Ed, Evan, why don't you give some Evan, context? Evan Haffer was the, is the CEO and real founder. You have Matt Best, who is a co-founder, Jared Taylor, and Richard Ryan, who is the last co-founder. And really, they are a veteran-founded coffee company that serves premium coffee for people that love America and love the armed forces or first responders. Guys, this is what I love about this company and love all these companies we keep talking about, right? Coffee. We talked about how many coffee brands, Matt? We had Super Coffee so far, uh, uh, Death Wish Coffee, Bulletproof. All have their own certain voice. And this one actually reminded me a little bit of a mix of Liquid Death especially. Yeah, a little and bit was, of Bulletproof. Bulletproof. So they're talking specifically to vets. There's nothing really different about their coffee, but their brand voice. So it, just think about this. You could take an existing product, but if you're marketing to that specific audience and staying true to yourself, true to who they are, which is you know a lot of the points that we're gonna discuss, you could build up that following and that cult nature. Yeah. I mean, they're competing with people like Starbucks, Folgers Coffee. I'm talking about big brands, and this brand is again 2014. What? How many years? Seven years. Seven years. Seven years. And the approach that they're taking is just on another level. I, I mean, I haven't, I'd never heard of this brand before this podcast, before the recommendation that we got. At first, I feel like I went through like different transitions. Like at first I thought it was a joke company, like why Sean pick this one? Let's like, why this person say, it. and then you get into it love more it. and more, you learn about it. And it's amazing because let's be honest, th there's nothing different about the coffee that they do. Obviously they get it from Brazil or Colombia. It's that type of coffee being for the most part with some exotic extracts can they have grinds, they have beans. So it's, it's the coffee is the same, but what they differentiate themselves is with their branding, their, their identity, their brand voice, and just their basically who they are as individuals and who basically who they support as a company, which you'll, you'll see as you evolve. Yeah. And just before we get to the points, Let's talk about their stats. I mean, some of their stats. YouTube followers, I was looking at, just oh. for the, the uh, their YouTube channel, is 847,000 subscribers to date. And that's what, January January 25th, 2022. Uh, their Facebook, I believe, is 1.6 million. Yep. Their TikTok was about, I believe, 500,000. Uh, what was their IG? IG was 1.7 million. And from what I saw from their investor deck, because they are doing a SPAC, which we can explain later, is like 1.6 billion expressions on social media. I mean, it's it's nuts. They're they're. I bet you they're following. I didn't compare. It, it's bigger than like Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, it, it crushes it. It's bigger than Lululemon, Yeti. Like they did a comparative like chart in the investor deck versus all other companies, and there's no comparison. I fucking love it. This is why, because the content matters. Let's just now. Want to go start with number one? Yeah. Want me to lead it off? Yeah, lead it off. Awesome. Cool. So commit to your brand voice and your true identity when starting a brand. And this is something that we can all learn from Black Coffee, um, Black Rifle Coffee. <laughs> We're just gonna call it basically BRCC from now on, just to not stumble yeah, yeah. every time we try to say it for me. <laughs> um, so this is something we can learn from them. These guys are true to their brand. They're all ex-military, Green Beret. I think they're all in like the special ops, all different divisions but they are true to being American patriots and to helping first line responders, military, and supporting that. That is who they are through and through, just not saying that's what we do or things like that. They lived it, and now they look at your, their employee staff. They, they've hired over 50% ex-military veterans or friends or family of military, So, and they want to 
employ 10,000. But overall, like when you create a brand, you have to stay true to like what that brand is and who you are. You cannot fake it. You can't fake being something if you're an unhealthy person and then you say that you're going to create a healthy brand. It's never going to work. You have to stay true and you have to be just original and authentic and you have to serve people like you and that who believe in the same things. And this is what they do great. There's no difference in coffee. There's nothing that separates them, Starbucks, Bulletproof or anything like that. But if I was going to drink coffee, would I rather drink coffee from Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, or if there's a Black Rifle co coffee around here, which we're in the Northeast, they don't have that big of a presence here. I would choose them over them because I, I'm a big fan of backing the military and supporting our veterans. I believe in basically everything that they do, and they're big for dogs and SRV animals, which I love too. So there's nothing different about any of the coffees no. between anything. It's the branding. But I would support them because I support the branding and what they stand for. So this is like we say, you always have to have a competitive advantage in the business. Their competitive advantage doesn't particularly like evolve or it's not particularly in their coffee. It's in the branding and who they are and who they look to help. And that, that can be a separator, which we see here, guys. They did $230 million in sales in 2021. I didn't add a zero there. $230 million in coffee. Like that's crazy. And by the way, they're valued at one point seven what a billion 1. because seven billion. Just to confirm that because of the It's like a seven times multiplier on basically revenue. Okay. But also the merger deal or something they it, did. They did they did something called a SPAC, which very simply, if you ever heard of SPAC, all it is it's a way to go public, basically in a less expensive way than hiring like an underwriter like a bank like Goldman Sachs or JPM and go IPO. That's basically the premise of how SPACs work yeah, to keep it simple. And I want to circle back with what Matt just said about staying true to who you are. It has to be all over. You can't fake it. And this is actually an example. I was looking through their Facebook mentions, like on a Facebook tag. Anyone that's uh, watching the video rather than tunes, you'll, you'll see the B-roll. And one of the customers, just tons of customers talking about them, yeah. tagging them. There's like groups, like veterans groups. There's uh, first, uh, first responders as well. And then it's also a customer literally wrote like three paragraphs of why they love this brand. And it literally gave a story of their customer experience. They ordered a coffee and I believe it was in, they didn't order medium size. They ordered a lot more than that. And they emailed the the, the brand and the customers, uh, the, the brand responded back immediately. Apparently they, she even gives a timeline, a timeline. She's like, I emailed them around 6 PM. Didn't expect an answer till probably the next day or like the next week. This guy, I think Chris, uh, response an email probably like 20 minutes later saying we looked up your order you're right this was an, a human error we're gonna send you another order and regarding the the one that you have right now just give that to one of the first responders or so your uh, your local uh, like fire department or something don't just throw it away or just use it the yeah. way they respond to that yeah. line i really love because again it relates to their brand and and this, yeah, and this is something I've read recently. I try to do as much reading as possible, morning, nights, and things like that about brand voices, brands, business in general. If you identify yourself, so they are special ops, so they're military, so they basically try to do everything with perfection, right? That they have to. Their life is on the line when they when they do missions or when they were training. So they run a business, or like they just that don't give well. a fuck. No, they give also. a fuck. They, they, no, they do, they, they do, but they, I mean, like, they said this in their, in the brand voice, they do everything to perfection because this is how they were trained and like, but this is why they, they were, they, they're so passionate about this because they live this, but like, like Sean saying, like that is a, basically every decision they make in their company is using that style or that, that kind of their, the, these, their passion in terms of like a decision of how you respond to a customer service, a decision about what charity you're going to go to, a, just a decision about how to run the business. It has to meet their guidelines of serving good coffee and supporting veterans. If a decision in the business doesn't support those agenda, that mission statement, then they're not going to make it. And that's what good businesses have to understand. You have to know your core mission, write it out, make sure everyone agrees with it. And then every decision as a business you make, it must agree with your core mission. If it doesn't, then it's not the right choice. And sometimes you put the mission before making money. Yeah, and everything else, I mean, with the brand products, what is what I saw one of their coffees, like it's called AK-47. Imagine that, like people, so there's a lot of people, you know, the anti-gun laws, all yeah. that. You're, you're really like promoting things that people don't want to talk about or it's like, you're going to get people Tabo that don't again. like you. 
Yeah. But their whole brand is about that. Yeah. So and, that's staying true to I, your identity. And I was thinking about that on the, on the drive over here. It's like thinking about brand identity and like what they do and like their mission statement and staying true to it. It's like they didn't start this brand, which I see a lot of entrepreneurs. They didn't start this brand to make money. Mm-hmm. I don't think they did. I think they started this brand to basically help veterans out and give them a place to work and like create a veteran based business. You know what I mean? And and that's why it's successful because every decision they make is to help veterans and not to make money. Well, they definitely wanted to make money. To support family, but they I think they their, but it was a good their opportunity. passion was to really help the veteran community. And I believe they, they, the way they merged, I mean, the way they all came together, Evan, I believe, had another company. I don't think it did well. And then found that these the, the two other guys that had this uh, clothing brand, I believe. Was it? So they, I mean, they're they, big in clothing, clothing and like yeah. mugs and things like that. Tumblers. And, uh, Evan came up, just to give you a little context, Evan came up with this idea about the coffee and sold it through that brand first initially Correct, and yeah. sold a lot. And it did well. They decided to do uh, it. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. Number two, become the source of entertainment. Wow. This brand, literally go on their YouTube, go any other channels. Right now, if you when you have time, go on their YouTube channel. You'll see a bunch of playlists. One of their playlists, they literally have like entertainment for everybody. One of them is called Veterans React. That's literally, it reminds me of, or anyone that well, ever seen this, MTV's show called Ridiculousness. I don't yep. know if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Yep. And it's it literally the setup is very similar to that. And it's the guys that are just reacting to like gamers, games, uh, people playing video games or films or like anything that they just could talk about in there. And it's getting tons of views. Literally every video they put out, I mean, at least in the first, like, Five days ago, they put out a video. They get like 50,000 views. They get tons of engagement. Again, so that's just one of their many series. Uh, they have comedy type of videos. They have storytelling videos. And this is all on their YouTube. They're, they're really good at creating content that relates to their audience or their beliefs. Really good at it. Like, I never heard of it. I went to their Instagram page, and I was scrolling through their Instagram probably for 10 minutes because I found their videos either hilarious or they had, like, service dogs on it or, like, it, it was just good content or like they had they opened up their new their new like one can coffee and they were in like a, a four wheel four wheel like you t- like um, what's it called a, was it RVs yeah the RVs and like ripping it through the forest while like the person's trying to drink yeah. it was it was funny that was but, a real right yeah I think it was, it was a real. real so it was just they have great con- creative great content and here here is another takeaway not just their YouTube but I'm talking about all the channels they also have. A blog called Coffee for Death. What is it? Coffee, Coffee or Death. Coffee or Death. This is our online magazine publisher. For those that have been listening consistently, it reminds me exactly what Away did. Yeah. I forgot what the blog was. It was a complete another standalone. Now, when you go on this page, Coffee or Death. Okay, am I saying that right? Yeah, Coffee, Coffee or Death. Coffee or Death. Not doesn't mean you'll see the association with the brand, but it's it talks about like. Anything related, talking about like maybe something in New York City, cop, something happened, an incident there, yeah. or something about a uh, fire department or the fi- like a local fire department or something that's anything relatable to that demographic. They actually have, here's a, a little about Coffee or Die magazine is, this is our YouTube description, is Black Rifles Coffee Company's news and lifestyle magazine launched in June 2018. Remember the brand started in when? Late 2014. So this is like a new thing. The magazine covers stories both about and for the military, first responder, veteran, and coffee enthusiast communities. This is huge because right now, I mean, for the last almost a year, it's been very hard retargeting your audience because of the Pixel and the iOS 14 update, right? So now they're just getting more more subscribers, more email contacts yeah. through another channel That's it. that nobody would be interested in their product. So it's, just, it's like a home run each way. They're literally another pure wow media uh, conglomerate it's, the, it's crazy it's the future guys you are not going to be nuts. able to re- re- like rely oh, on it. facebook tiktok it. and all of them for the future i'll it, tell you right that right now it and it's track, his own brand the tracking of like matching up customers to like your brand through those tech companies it's going to eventually with with what's going on in law and emotional like uh, emotional and stable like mental health for young kids i just don't think it can it can't stay pace and mean? Facebook's move to Meta oh. is basically telling me that Facebook knows it too. My my opinion. And this is why you become your own publisher. Yeah. This you is become, why you have to you and on top of that you be, you become your it's your own another company, right? I would assume like it's coffee or death. 
as its own not, YouTube it's channel. Probably, yeah, it's probably not another company, but but it's it acts like it is. It acts like it is to get subscribers, and then they retarget their subscribers, or they, they can cross reference it. Yeah, yeah I like believe it. their YouTube their, uh, that YouTube channel has about one hundred twenty seven thousand subscribers. I mean, that's that's great. That's just like if you're if you're gonna sell the company, you're valued ton, yeah. ten times more. I mean, I don't know, that's a number, but yeah. a lot more. They'll, they'll never sell it, but yeah, it's nuts. So that's how you take it. Become your own entertainer. Become your own publisher. Yep. So number three, create a brand that your customers will emotionally support, and this is something that I think they might have the most diehard fans. I have any company we did a podcast on. I think I can say that pretty honestly and confidently. So they show on their investor deck because they're doing a SPAC. So when you have SPACs, you can get have investors that are just like me or you or Sean or anyone out there. They show their score. It's called a net promoter score. And they have a score of 78, which is super high. What's um, a net promoter score? It's basically you a could... promoter score of uh, customers, how much customers love Black Rifle Coffee. And they, they compare it to other companies. I How's think, that valued or how do you it's, it's taking It's a survey. So they Got take it. a survey of how, what, like what score they have. Uh, there's only one brand that was higher than them in this thing. It's Lululemon, which we has a no has a strong support as well. And then you have Yeti, which was at 67, Starbucks at 24, and Dunkin' Donuts at 20, and they go to 78. And you think about why that is. It's because they have a mission statement that people actually can get behind, even though it's not related to the product. It's coffee, right? But it's to support the troops, veterans first line defenders there's a lot of people that know are seven percent of the population is military uh of adults and then how many people know a military individual or have family or have first lines a lot of people so if you can get your customers to emotionally support you and really love your brand like sean's gonna say bring up tim ferris a thousand true a, a thousand mm -hmm. true fans you can create a business and the brand and the bigger that that number of people are that will emotionally. I think it's uh, Kevin, by the way. Kevin's actual author. Kevin something. He just puts it in the book. He just puts it in the book. Yeah. yeah. If you can do that, then you can create a sustainable and a, a business that can change the world. And? And what? Sorry, I was actually. I he, was, was, he was in a different world. I was, is, I was trying to grasp, know where we are. I was trying to grasp the concept because you. you know. so, so you need to create a business and create something that has emotional fans. So that's something that they they have done through and their it's not just a brand fans. voice and their identity. No, it's two hundred eighty five thousand subscribers to their coffee uh, subscription. They have a subscription model, so that's that's a model. reoccurring. Two hundred eighty five thousand people. I mean, just think about it. That's just crazy. That's I'll, I have they no words. They definitely formulated everything correctly. All right, for mine's number three. Number four. All right, know when to use chat bots. I'm sometimes against against this, but I'm very for it as well. Chatbots help increase your conversion. So if done correctly, like these guys, they've done it perfectly correct, it could help increase your conversion. So when you go, you know, on the mobile or in the desktop on their website, you go on their the other things on the bottom right, it could change when you watch this or listen to this. You click on it, it's like a dog meme and it says like, Hey, I'm the the you know, the company's chat bot, they're not acting like they're a person. So this is what bothers me. You know, some brands do this. They act like it's an actual person. It's not. You're not the person. You're the bot. You're a bot. Now, if you could make it relatable, because a lot of people hate talking to bots or to robots. And I hate that. Like, a lot of customer service is annoying. But it, it leads into, I believe, three categories. One of the categories was um, something about their coffee quiz to determine the type of coffee that you like. Yeah. And you know, when you click on that, wow, this quiz is amazing. Because you don't know what, sometimes you're like, you're okay, like especially if it's a new brand, you're like, okay, I don't know what type of coffee. Like I know what to get at Starbucks, but with this coffee, they have so many different varieties. I don't know if I need to get the darker version, a lighter version. You don't yeah. know. There's just too much going on. So they really break it down and refer you. And at the end of the quiz, they give you a landing page of like, this is what, you know, these yeah, are the like type of products that you like. I went through as well. They also do that in the subscription program too. They like walk you through like the proper subscription for you. So it's not like, okay, yeah, pick one of our products, like add to cart subscription. It's actually like takes you through the blend, how many times a day you drink, what kind of caffeine levels do you like? What type of coffee do you drink? Like it's like a seven step different flavor, like a seven step process just to like choose your subscription and it's in depth. Yeah, they make it super easy for you. So the easier do you can make for the customer, like the support process, 
and so forth. And by the way, you could get a human or like, you know, like right now, Reborn, yep. I'm doing the customer service, there's a chatbot, and that's actually me. And I love that. I get a lot of insight on that. However, you know, as you want to scale and so forth, we always say, say this, like you got to make it a little easier. So it could be eventually lead to me, but it, escalate. Yeah. And escalate. But it could, you know, you could have like three different tabs and then other tab could be like actual talk to a person, which could be me. But the other ones could be, you know, helping like if you need a quiz, this is yep. where to go. Do you want to look for sales? I think the other two I'm looking at right now is if you want to track an order. Edit your subscription or yeah, track your edit order. Or track my order. That's a lot of questions. Most likely it's all the customer service questions. Those are, yeah, those are the questions that you, so it makes it seamless. Very easy to, for the customer to like find their product and so forth or whatever they're looking for. Yeah. So. And their churn rate, guys, 285,000 subscribers, subscriptions, their churn rate is like 3 or 4% per month, which is nothing. Like industry, industry like gold, like no one else can do that. Beautiful. All right. Uh, number? I think I am up number five, right? Number five. Nice. Create omni-channel revenue streams to help grow your brand. So this is something that uh, BRCC is doing very well right now. And as they grow... As you grow from, they were 93 million in 2019. They were 130 or 100, no, 163 million in 2020, and they did 230 million in revenue in 2021. So at that pace, it's really hard to grow, especially as numbers get bigger. So what they have had to do, they were very much mostly all DTC business, meaning direct to consumer to their website. They are creating now other channels of revenue other than consumers just going to their website. First thing they're doing, retail, and in two different forms. They're creating four wall locations like Starbucks. They have 17 right now that are all across the Midwest for the most part, and they're going to expand by 2023 to 98 locations. So that's going to be another revenue source. Right now, they do about $2.5 million per out, they call it an outpost, right? Staying true to their brand. It's really just like a Starbucks location. It's a location. So they have 17 outposts right now. And then what they're also doing is they're also having, creating products that are canned like this. Cold Brew, I think they have a mocha, they have an espresso. And they're in, uh, in 3,000 retail locations and probably going to be in a lot more. I know in this area on the East Coast, they're in Speedway gas stations. Um, they are in... Um, What's the outdoor company called? Biggest out? It's like huge. Yeti. No, not Yeti. Yeti's the thing. Um, what's the Paragon? No, no, no. So there's a the great outdoor store where it's basically you can go in there and buy like rifles, your hunting equipment. It's huge. I forget the name of it. They are they have a partnership with them, but they have huge amounts of retail space that they want to get into with their cans and whatnot. So this is a basically when you try to grow this is something that you need to focus on it's called omni channel so you want to create multiple channels of revenue coming in from different areas you have one from direct to consumer from your website you have one from retail in other locations like speedway or gas stations or convenience stores and then you have your own retail stores just like a starbucks so those are three different channels that's how you're going to grow revenue. It's very hard to grow ch grow, grow revenue in only one channel, especially as you get bigger. It's near impossible. But how you can do this, create different channels through re retail, DTC, and then almost through other areas. And that is how you keep on growing. They actually hired um, an expert on this. Uh, I forgot his name, but he, he, did, he, was, he was part of the Panda Express uh, yeah expansion as well during the SPAC they really they really increased they have uh, they brought on some coca-cola their CFO has experience from overstock.com I saw and another educational company Sean mentioned Panda Express they brought in another CPG uh, consumer product person that was in uh, another space like a huge space but they bolstered up their management team which usually happens in the SPAC so like you can bring more money in and you have trusted advisors as you grow I have a question actually and I just thought and I think I this is good this is actually genius on their part but what do you think their goal is on these retail stores on their retail stores yeah to take market share away from Starbucks okay but then what and then what like what are they gonna do they're gonna I feel this is my prediction. Just by just what they're, what, they're gonna start franchising. No, why not? This is not like Allbirds. This is a coffee shop. Like they're it making their co they they don't they wouldn't call it. They won't create they a franchise they, channel. No, they don't need to. They're not. They're not trying to grow rapidly like that. Like mm. Starbucks aren't franchised. Chick Fil A's. Uh, I don't know if Chick Fil A's are franchised. 
I don't think Wawa is a franchise. The reason why is because it's hard to keep standards up, even though usually franchisees take better care of the restaurants than corporate stores. But for the most part, like Starbucks are not franchise locations. So um, I don't think they're franchising. But you don't think that would make them? I mean, I get it. They, they, or they will just franchise to other vets. They could. They could. I didn't see anything in the SPAC investor deck. It was like 60 pages about franchising. No, no, no. That's why it's my prediction. Yeah. Maybe they will, um, especially to other vets. I could see that align very well with their company. Number six, using political stance and or relevancy to drive awareness. Wow, these guys definitely know how to use a political stance. And what they did actually, so one of the, they have actually multiple examples of doing this, but they're not afraid of talking about their political you know, they were very pro Trump. But one of them, I think it was in 2017, uh, I believe 2017, that Starbucks um, came out and said, we, uh, it was during this, uh, I think Trump said they're, they're going to. I think it was about the border in terms yeah. of like securing the border and refugees. And Starbucks said hey, they're going to give jobs to 10,000 refugees. So what did uh, Black Rifle Coffee end up doing? They created a meme that, it's actually pretty funny, um, the meme of, Literally, I mean, it's not funny, but it's funny. Uh, the, a meme of like, gee, like a terrorist. See, group. he's trying to be politi- politically yeah, yeah, yeah. correct right, right now while he's right. playing an unpolitical, you're right, the correct company um, <laughs> of like terrorist group with star, like literally with their guns with Starbucks next to them, and then underneath that you have like troops, like um, like US veterans, veterans saying, and then their stance is saying they're going to give. I believe 10,000 jobs. jobs to vets. That's what they claim in the next X amount of years. And they, they've stayed true. That. That's literally their mission statement is to get, get like create job, 10,000 jobs for veterans. Yeah, so they, they definitely know when to really speak loud. They've done the same thing. I mean, they did something, again, they believe with, uh, uh, I forgot what they would attack. They, love, they really do like attacking companies. When, oh, when, when those decisions, like those other companies' decisions don't align with like either like America or like the veterans. Yeah. Um, Which is fine. They're I mean, speaking their voice. Exactly. They're speaking their voice and they're going to get a lot of probably drawback, but you're also going to gain a lot of fans. That's, that's what it is. You can't play both. I mean, it's really hard to play both sides, especially when you want to yeah. disrupt. You want to speak your voice and what you believe in and what it's thinking about. You're not just going to say it just to get attention. You're going to say it because you believe in it. And it's part of your brand, your brand identity, your brand name, your your brand culture. Yeah, so, like this brand probably wouldn't work outside the United States. It, it wouldn't. Yeah. Right. And, and then it, they're even seeing it. This is very highly concentrated to like the Midwest. And as you go towards like the coasts, which are known to be more liberal and like the, the Northeast, like California, there's not that much of a percentage, I guess, viewership, like unknowing, like people don't know about this company. I think in the Northeast, it said 3% know about this company. Well, it's also because it's, it's not there. Th- yeah. But why is it not there? Because most likely they understand business demographics and they don't know if they can be a successful business in that probably yeah. territory. Exactly. All right. I think that's it, right? Yep. That's all. Guys, I hope you like this episode. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Amazon, Spotify, please give us a five-star rating. If you like this content, if you know This could help someone uh, start a business or in their middle of working on their business. Share this podcast with them. Uh, If you're listening to this on YouTube, give the thumbs up button. Subscribe for more weekly videos. And if you have any questions, you could tweet at mscopac or at Sean underscore Zari or just leave it in the comments below. below. We'll see you next week. Ciao.